Now, a few months back, I did my unboxing, got my first look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 7, all new for 2022. It has a P-Series processor. It has a pretty nice display, actually a really good display, and you can get it with a really high-res OLED display. And it really brings a lot to the table in terms of not only performance, but battery life, and of course, its versatility as being a convertible laptop. And it has a pen that allows you to take notes, sketch out artwork, diagrams, and the like. So I've been using it for the last few months, and this is my review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my full review of the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 7, all new for 2022. Coming up. Anchor sent over a great webcam for me to check out, and it really is up my video conferencing game. It's a 2K webcam. It's called the Anchor Power Conference C200 with a 2K resolution. It's got really nice microphones and has a really great shutter switch, giving you more security and privacy. Now, I'm really tired of these really bad webcams we've been seeing on some of these laptops. This sticks to the top of the laptop or on your monitor, very travel friendly, and it's made really well. The build quality is off the charts. And best of all, it won't break the bank. So if you want to up your Zoom calls and your video conferencing needs, check out the Anchor Power Conference C200. And yes, I'll leave a link in the description below. This is a really good price for a really good webcam. And I want to thank Anchor for sponsoring today's video. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo, and when this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, when I first looked at this laptop and did my unboxing, it had a starting price of about $1,720. Well, since then, the price has dropped dramatically with a starting price of $1,180. For those interested, I'll drop a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And for those wondering, yes, I did do that unboxing and first look review. For those that didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. I highly encourage you to check it out. Okay, let's talk about the build quality and it's excellent. This is an all metal design. This is fully aluminum here and it's rock solid with very little give or flex in the chassis. It's been really good over the last few months that I've been using this. Now, this is a really nice storm gray color, a little departure from the traditional black we've been seeing, say from the X1 Carbon Gen 10 that I took a look at. And as far as the build, it's got that mill standard A10H rating. That means this can take a licking and keep on ticking. Now, as far as the weight, you're looking at 1.38 kilograms or 3.04 pounds so definitely portable and travel friendly if you want to take it on the road okay let's check out the port selection on the left side two usb-c thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function supporting data charge and display out next to that is a usba 3.2 gen 1 port and next to that is an hdmi 2.0 b port and moving over to the right side is the silo that houses the pen. That's always good to have. You don't want to lose that pen. And then, of course, next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, another USB-A port, and a Kensington lock port to round out the ports on this laptop. Now, notably missing, there's no SD card reader, but I would say all in all, a pretty good port selection. And if you go with the optional 5G on that right side will be the SIM tray for that nano SIM. Now, I already opened up this laptop in my unboxing and first look video. Again, for those that didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. They make it really easy. You gotta love that. Now, let's talk RAM. This can be configured with up to 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, which is soldered into the motherboard, but it is running in dual channel mode. It's running at 5200 megahertz, which is fast here in 2022, so that has been really good. Now, 
my review unit has 16 gigabytes of RAM, but again, up to 32 if you need it. Now, as far as the SSD is concerned, this is also supporting PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, and it is user replaceable. And as you can see from these reads and writes, not quite up to snuff when it comes to Gen 4, but certainly fast enough for what you need to do with this convertible laptop. And when it comes to wireless, this has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2. And you could also get the optional wireless WAN or 5G uses the Sub 6 Cat 20 or 4G LTE Cat 16. Those are your choices. Now, when it comes to the Wi-Fi 6E and the Bluetooth, both working really well. So a lot of options when it comes to the wireless here, all working really well. Now, one thing to note, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo card is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user down the road. Okay, folks, let's talk about display. We get three options here. You get two full HD plus options and one UHD plus OLED option. I don't have that one. That is a nice way to go if you want a really high res display. But what they did send over is the second option, which is the 1920 by 1200 IPS option. And it has that anti-reflective coating, anti-smudge on it, touchscreen, low power, and it is also 400 nits in terms of its brightness rating. And I actually measured really good measurements here. But again, if you want really good coverage of the color gamut, you really want excellent color accuracy, invest in that UHD plus OLED display. But as far as this full HD plus is concerned, you're looking at 402 nits of brightness, 0 0.25 black levels, which is excellent, a good white point, excellent contrast, and a low Delta E score of 1.21, which meaning it means that it is color accurate. And we got decent coverage of the color gamut, as you can see from these pretty good results here. So if you are a content creator and want to get this full HD plus, you can definitely use it. But again, higher res, better coverage of the color gamut, better color accuracy in that UHD plus option. And of course, that'll be OLED giving you the really vibrant colors and the really high contrast. And of course, the really super black. So that is going to be really good. But this display actually has been really good over the last few months that I've been using it. And the other benefit of going with Full HD over the UHD Plus OLED is the fact that you're going to get better battery life with this lower res display. But my overall takeaway, this Full HD Plus IPS display has been really, really good. So this is the front facing camera on the brand new ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 7 here for 2022. Now this is a 1080p camera. Now I think it's pretty good in terms of that video quality and the audio quality. Now this is a quad array mic uh, system here. So what do you think about the audio quality as well as that video quality? Let me know in that comment section below. Now, a couple of things to note about the webcam. There's a shutter switch to turn off the webcam, giving you more security and privacy. You got to like that, especially in a sensitive business environment. And then, of course, there's also the power button, which doubles as a fingerprint scanner. That worked well. Setup was easy and registered my finger each and every time I used it. Good layer of security there as well. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Good hinges, not something you could normally do on a convertible laptop. Nice. Now, keyboard. This has a ThinkPad keyboard. I actually really like it. The tactility is good. The excellent key travel that the ThinkPads are known for is here. Really comfortable for long periods of typing. So no complaints on the keyboard front. Not too unexpected here. This is a ThinkPad after all. This is also a backlit keyboard, a multi-stage backlight, which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Spill resistant keyboard, which you can't argue with. That's always good. And it has their new air intake system to help with cooling. And for those wondering, this is what it sounds like when you're typing on this keyboard. And it has a pretty nice touchpad. There are physical mouse buttons to help when you're using the track point. And as far as the touchpad, two finger scrolling worked really well, really responsive, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Good job on the touchpad front as well as the track point. Now, for those that don't like the track point, you don't need to use it. But of course, it is inherent part of the ThinkPad DNA. And of course, this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put this into the different modes. You got the tent mode, which is great for consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, even recipes in the kitchen. It works out great. And of course, there's the stand mode or presentation mode, also great for consuming media. And you could always put it into the tablet mode. Great for use with the pen. Now, the pen stores and charges within the laptop, and it only takes a few minutes maybe to give it a full charge, and it lasts pretty good 
good, lasts pretty long, and it's great for taking notes, sketching out diagrams or artwork when you need it. It worked out really well. But of course, if you want to use a full-size pen, you have that option, but storing it and charging it means you're not going to lose it when it's in the laptop. So that's been pretty good. Okay, let's talk performance. And one of the things you're going to notice is that it's using the P-Series processor. We talked about it in the unboxing and first look review that I did. And the P, of course, stands for performance, meaning you're getting 12 cores here, eight efficiency cores, and four performance cores. And the performance actually is really good. Although when you're under heavy sustained workloads, you're going to notice it thermal throttle. That's to keep it cool. And that's it to maintain relatively uh, moderate temperatures. But I got to say the performance for everyday use such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all worked well. Remember, this has integrated Iris XE graphics, so don't expect to do 4K video editing on the high settings here. It's really not meant to do that, but of course you have the option of adding an external GPU thanks to the two Thunderbolt 4 ports that this has. Now, when it comes to gaming, this is really not a gaming laptop, but I think you already know that, but you can play some of the older titles. If you lower the settings, you'll get playable frame rates, but don't expect to play AAA titles on their highest settings with the integrated Iris XE graphics, which as I mentioned previous times in other videos, that it is getting a little bit long in the tooth. We need to see a nice upgrade in that department next year. And when it comes to thermals, I noticed it thermal throttle under heavy load, as I mentioned. And then, of course, in everyday use, you're not going to really notice a degradation in performance. But really, under maximum load, it will lower the clock speeds to lower the temperatures. And as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, I noticed it was a couple of hot spots here and there, but nothing outrageous here, nothing too hot to the touch. And when it comes to fan noise, you definitely will notice the fans kick in, although they've kept it pretty quiet, about 39 decibels, which is actually actually pretty good not too noticeable especially when you want to get work done now when i did run it in the optimized or the power efficiency mode they don't really come on all that much but will come on here and there but you will notice it in the sustained workloads now this is a 57 watt hour battery and it did just shy of nine hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does this translate into real world mixed usage? You can expect anywhere from maybe six, seven hours depending on what you're doing. But of course, everybody's use case is a little bit different. So your mileage may vary. Please keep that in mind. And the supplied 65 watt USB-C power adapter takes about 90 minutes for a full charge. Pretty good. And this has quad speakers, two tweeters, two woofers to help with the sound on this. And I think the overall volume was good. The mids were decent and there was some bass. I think the overall sound for a two-in-one convertible has actually been pretty good. Okay, people, let's bring it on home. What do I think about the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 7 here for 2022? Now, having reviewed this long term here for the last few months, I got to say there's a lot to like here, especially if you're looking for a business convertible laptop with a gorgeous 14 inch display with the option for a 4K plus OLED. That is something you can get on this. You get PCIe Gen 4 SSD support, LPDDR5 RAM, uh, great port selection on this with the exception of there's no SD card reader upgradable ssd as i mentioned something you can upgrade as the user as your needs change down the road it's got that thinkpad keyboard it's spill resistant good tactility good key travel really good quad speakers with dolby atmos helping with the spatial audio and of course you get that thinkpad durable rock solid build and design and you get optional 5g for the road warrior who needs that always on connection on the road now the negatives of course it can get expensive but lenovo has slashed the price since since its initial release uh, by a significant amount and you might even get even more discounts always check the link in the description below for the latest pricing and you will notice the fans kick in under heavy load although never going above 39 decibels wasn't too bad but you will notice them under heavy sustained workload and you will notice some thermal throttling due to the thin light nature of the chassis 
but my overall takeaway is Lenovo once again has done a rock solid job with a venerable X1 Yoga Gen 7 here for 2022, a solid business convertible. If you need one, this is the one to look at. So what do you think about the X1 Yoga Gen 7 here for 2022? I like the versatility. I like that storm gray finish it has, a little bit different than that basic black we normally see on the X1 Carbon line we just looked at with the Gen 10, although I just did that 30th anniversary, that one's actually pretty nice. Now, it will thermal throttle under heavy load, not too unexpected in a thin and light ultra portable convertible here that we have here for 2022. A little bit over three pounds, it's very travel friendly, optional 4G LTE or even 5G with a sub-6 CAT 20 modem on it. So you can definitely get some work done, stay connected on the road. A lot of business executives require that. You got vPro here, so you have those added layer of security. A full HD webcam that obviously is an IR webcam that allows you to log in with face recognition. It also has a fingerprint scanner, so a lot of security features. And again, an upgraded web conferencing uh, experience, but I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.